property services need or financial services need to order. Sort of that's that's what I'm going to say. A little excited there. Apologize. Uh, first, we'll begin with the um, land recognition acknowledgement. I would like to begin by acknowledging that we are in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. Okay. Uh, first, we have the approval of the agenda. It's been moved and seconded. No other additions this evening, so I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Country to mind today. Motion carried. Is there any emergency resolutions this evening? Resolutions? Seeing none. Any errors and emissions corrections to the minutes of June 19th? Any errors, emissions, corrections to the minutes of June 19th? Any errors, emissions, corrections to the June minutes of June 19th? No. Seeing none, we'll consider those minutes correct. No correspondence this evening. We'll move on to reports, recreation, and MPAL. Deputy Warden Murray, seconded by Councilor Watton. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your number, so I'm going to start two. Sorry about that. Hold on. Moved by Councilor Watton, seconded by Councilor Watton. Any other any questions or comments on the recreation and MPAL? Okay, seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, just signify by saying aye. 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 Country mind the Motion carried. Next, we have a communication report for the month of June 2023. What's your pleasure, Councillors? Moved by Warden Parker. Second. Second by Deputy Warden Murray. Any questions or comments on the communications report? Seeing now, top of the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Come to mind today. Motion carried. Next, we have the emergency services report for the month of June. Moved by Councillor Elliott. Thank you, Council Bonner. Questions or comments on the emergency services report? Seeing now, I'll offer the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Okay. Country minded nay. Motion carry. Next, we have the fire inspector's report. Okay, moved by Council Butler. Thank you, by Council Wadden. Any questions or comments on the fire inspector's report? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Country minded day. Motion carried. Next, we have the warden's report for the month of June. Okay, moved by Councillor Dewar. Seconded by Councillor Parker. Questions or comments? Warden Parker, you'd like to speak on your report. Is there anything you'd like to add? I was wanted after the leader's Okay, sounds good. No change. That's good. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carry. Next, we have the council page for June 2023. <clears throat> Moved by Councilor Wyden. Seconded by Deputy Warden Murray. Questions or comments on any of the checks paid for the month of June? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor of signify by saying aye. Aye. Country minded nay. Motion carry. Next for information purposes only, we have the deed transfer tax. As you see, we're down a little bit this month, but that's kind of happening in the market right now. Great. So so on a bit. To be expected, yes. Questions or comments on that? Seeing now we'll move on to taxes receivable report. You see we had an open, opening balance of $9,762,909.56. And there was just almost $4.9 million worth of uh, payments processed. And we still have a receivable balance of about we received four fifteen thousand, almost four sixteen thousand of pre-paid taxes. 
Um, so you can. This is where we do it normally at. This is pretty standard. Yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments on taxes receivable? Okay. Considering that, move on. Reports are complete. Next, we'll move on to municipal service grants. We'll start with District 6, Lock Room, Log Church Committee, $2,000 for maintenance. Salem Presbyterian Church Hall, $6,000 for New Rank and Door Hall. West River Fire Department, $8,000 to assist in generation, generator purchase. And West River Presbyterian Church in the amount of $3,466 for painting a church for a total of $19,466.10. So we'll buy the Warden Parker. Second. Second by Council Turner. Any questions or comments on District 6 municipal service grants? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Contraband nay. Motion carried. Next, we'll move on to District 11. We have Blue Mountain Fire Department in the amount of $3,563, contribution to the generator project. East River St. Mary's Fire Department in the amount of $3,500, contribution to the gener generator project. Uh, Garden of Eden Community Center, $4,000 for operating costs. Uh, Greensburg Cemetery, $400 for operating costs. Churchville Hall, $1,750 for operating costs. East River Valley Fire, Fire Department, $1,500 for equipment purchase. Uh, East River Valley Community Development Association, in the amount of $1,500 for newsletter expenses. East River Valley Recreation Association, $2,000 for operating costs. Glenville Community Hall, $950 for operating costs. Plymouth Community and Recreation, Recreation Association, $3,000 for landscaping costs. Plymouth Fire Department Ladies Auxiliary, $950 for equipment purchase. Springville Cemetery, $400 for cemetery maintenance. And trustees of Springville Presbyterian Church, $2,000 for contribution to the generating project, totaling $25,513. Yes. Uh, the uh, Garden Eden Community Center, its operating costs and your generating projects. Okay, so it's both. I'll say. Okay, so it's moved by Councillor Thompson and seconded by Councillor Dewar. Any questions or comments on the District 11 Municipal Service Grants? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Don't you mind the day? Motion carried. All right, next we have District 12. Um, we'll start here with the Warren Hall, an amount of $6,000 for operating costs. Friends of Iona Park, $2,000 for operating costs. Hopewell First, Presbyterian Church, $750 for War Memorial Upkeep. McLean Cemetery, $1,000 for maintenance costs. Marshall Cemetery, $1,000 for maintenance costs. Football 4-H, $1,750, 4-H expense and uh, kiosk maintenance. Isha Valley Community Development Association, $6,000 for Riverton Hall operation and newsletter. And finally, East River Valley Recreation, $2,000 for recreation program costs for a total of $20,500. Moved by Councilor Dewar, seconded by Councilor Thompson. Any questions or comments on District 12 Municipal Service Grants? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contrary, aye. Contrary nay. Motion carried. Next, we have recreation grants. Uh, Hunter County Trap and Ski Club in the amount of $350. And Hunter County Art Society in the amount of $350. And both of those are startup grants for a total of $700. Moved by Councillor Palmer. Seconded by Councillor Elliott. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contraband at nay. Motion carry. And next we have uh, another recreation grant for Union Presbyterian Church uh, Youth Group in the amount of $1,500 as an operating grant for a total of $1,500. Move yeah. by, by Councilor Palmer, seconded by Councilor Parker. Questions or comments? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contraband at nay. Motion carry. Next, we have the Community Generator Fund. <clears throat> and we have first, we have East River Valley St. Mary's Fire Department, the amount of $3,410. Um, the MARSHA uh, at $3,557. Uh, 
Lismore District Recreation Center, $3,448, and Tony River Community Center in the amount of $4,567 for a total of $14,982. Moved by Councillor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Elliott. Any questions or comments on the Community Generator Fund? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contra minded nay. Motion carried. Okay, so there's our um, grants. Recreation, Municipal, and Community Generator Fund. Okay, next we're going to move on to the vehicle sale tenders. Uh, they were in our package. Okay. Um, as you know, that we had uh, surplus vehicles that uh, we put out to tender. Um, and uh, with those, we had a 2014 Dodge Ram 2500, a 2009 Chevrolet, uh, 1500 and 2014 Ford F-150. Um, it's recommended that we go with the award, uh, the highest bidder. So for the 2014 Dodge Ram, uh, 2500 was the highest bid was $2,501 for Dan Fortune, the 2009 Chevrolet 1500 at 3000 for Janet Pettikoff, and the 2014 Ford F-150 um, bid at $4,325 4, to Colin Chislett. Go ahead, Councilor Doran. Uh, go ahead and serve me for a bid in, but I thought unless something changed and I didn't know it changed, I remember years ago, I don't know how to put it in there. Put it in there. Mr. Powell, is that not right, Brian? Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. The staff, there is no restriction under the policy. Other. Okay, thank it you. It would be a conflict for accounts. Councilor Biden has moved it. I'll second. Seconded by Councilor Dewar. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Compromise nay. Motion carried. Next, we will move on to the cost of number nine, the cost of hooking up sewer laterals. Um, Councilor Wadley had asked me to put this on the agenda for tonight for discussion, so I'll go over to you. Okay. And actually, but we look more so it would be agreement to send to staff to have a look at some of the best practices in some of the other areas and um, updating by law policy considering matters because I'm really not sure what the charities are exploding them. So and that started it over. We wait too long because I think that it done uh, rather than just set the shelf. So that that is quite a sweet thing. Okay, thank you. Uh Board of Thank you, Madam um, Chair. I'm glad this was on the, the agenda tonight because it's been a bit of a concern of mine as I spoke to the CAO and Deputy Work with us different times that the cost of putting in these laterals, you know, when you have to cross through and stay out of the pavement, is getting really, really hot. And uh, I think we need to have a serious look at uh, the sharing of that cost between the general taxpayer. And the person that's getting the line put in, uh, the, uh, we've been at that uh, 2500 or whatever for a long time. Uh, and the cost of uh, everything you do today is probably double what it was three or four years ago. But uh, I think it is time, I agree with Councilor Watt, that we have staff to look at it and just to see if they can come up with a uh, reasonable uh, suggestion, I guess, as to uh, what might be a fairer. Sharing of that cost. Uh, well, the, I don't know if there's not enough machines around or what it is, but there seems to be a, a really high cost down. And maybe that's just the cost of doing business, and it is. That's why we need to look at the, the more up to date or uh, whatever uh, sharing of that cost. Thank you. Okay. Councilor yeah, Bobby, you have a motion? Okay. Make that motion and second by. Uh, with Parker. We asked staff to look into our uh, policy concerning hookup and new hookups and specifically um, super levels. Okay. We'll go ahead, Council Point. What's that, student? A lot of these are we're making a lot, right? The sewer, sewer we went through. Maybe we should look at being allowed to take a lot over store. Like that. That's how it's sort of the cost is. 
not shared with federal board chores. And if it maybe it doesn't look up to the other Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll follow the vote. All those in favor say five say nine. Okay. Okay, number 10, community connection event policy. <clears throat> Do you remember this was in our budget that we um the I guess policy that goes along with what we, we spoke a bunch of time about allotting fifteen hundred dollars to each district to suit support actually the events and kind of help with some of the costs of that. Um, as you know, community connectivity was one of the highlights, uh, one of our uh, top items that we identified um, during our strategic planning as a council. So this fits into to one of our strategic planning as well. We'll open it up to the floor. Council's Richard Fletcher. Go ahead, one director. As you uh, said, Madam uh, Chair, this is uh, one of the top uh, items uh, at our uh, meetings that we had during uh, this year for strategic planning or visibility. Visioning, I do it there with the, uh, but uh, and I think we had a discussion here about the night and uh, we had a vote and said it was to move ahead with this. So I think now it's just a matter of uh, of making it official here, uh, which is fine. Uh, we already had one in my area last Saturday. Uh, and so one of my questions is, uh, are, are, we, are we allowed to split between uh, the three or more events that help in our area? Are we allowed to split it between them? Uh, and is it, are we allowed to give it retroactively to uh, uh, communities that had it last Saturday? Uh, I, I don't see a problem with that, but I'm not sure. Uh, but I noticed that if it's a thousand dollars or over, you have to uh, report. Uh, but, uh, so if I were to split my three ladies fifteen hundred, there would be no need for a report. I guess so I, I didn't know just what the difference was between if somebody bets out of fifty or seven thousand, must be the NBA or something. No, it's just consistency with our other policy. Okay. Policies that are over a thousand proportion or under. It's split in three ways, I'll find, and they don't have to give a report now because they're just going to use it for their general expenses. If I'm not done, to remember. So uh, now I'm going to see it go through the flood groups uh, on the end, and so that's a good thing. So uh, I just wanted to be clear on the and uh, about the retroactive, uh, if they already had it, we can still give it up. Yes. Okay, thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Parker. Go ahead, Council Parker. Mr. Joder, how is that made? to the councilor, made to the council, made to the councilor, made to the council. So then, uh, in essence, we'll create a little more blank and just fill it in some way. If it's under the thousand, we'll process the chapters on the system policy. It's over a thousand, it has to be verified. This body, other than that, the chapter will just fill up. So we don't have a motion on the floor. A motion on the floor. Okay, Councillor Watkins, the uh, second and the second of Council Turner, approve the policy. Presented. Any final comments or questions concerning the policy? Yes, Councillor Butler. <laughs> Madam Chair, is there a particular form that we should use in reporting? Um, for the application, uh, we'll develop the form, uh, and if there's a requirement, we'll have to develop a reporting form for this one. But uh, we'll develop a simple application that you can fill out. Councilor will fill out so yeah, and if it's over a thousand dollars, we'll have a report. Any other comments or questions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Contra-minded nay. Motion carried. 
Okay, next we're going to move on to number 11, the voluntary vulnerable person registry. Councilor Thompson, you asked to uh, this to put on the agenda tonight the action of the adoption of the resolution uh, that's in our uh, package here in support of the establishment of a registry. So I'll turn it over to you. Floor is yours. Thank you. Um, resolution, whereas the climate emergency is here and climate change has identified has been identified as a priority, priority area of municipal interest, and whereas all Nova Scotians have a right to public safety, and this area is identified as one of the six priority areas of municipal interest, and whereas the United Nations identified people with disabilities are like two to four times more likely to die in the disaster, and whereas equity and community well-being is another priority area to serve 30% of Nova Scotians and 41% of seniors who identify as having a disability and aging in place of being encouraged. And whereas first forces are advocating for better emergency management and planning for people with disabilities, and whereas disasters do not respect administrative boundaries, and whereas all 49 municipalities may not have the same technical capacity or paid staff and re rely on volunteers to respond to these needs. And it's important for all Nova Scotians to have, to have access to the same level of public safety. safety. And whereas the vulnerable, pardon me, the voluntary vulnerable persons registry is recognized best practice in the emergency field. This is the voluntary registry, so those with privacy concerns need not register, and only location and accommodation needs are required data. The coordinator who manages the registry ensures it is constantly updated. And whereas HRN's Chief of Emergency Management in a report to HRN asking for a PVPR, which was recently passed by HRN, identified that the risk of not doing a VPR, death and injuries, obeys the risk managing expectations of doing one. And whereas lead, a leading expert in disaster planning and management, Paul Kovacs, the executive director of the Institute for Catastrophic Loss, University of Western Ontario, says all mechanics of a registry have been sorted out. And every question that can be asked, there is an answer for. Therefore, be resolved we, that we at the municipality of County of Victor asked for the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipalities newly formed Public Safety Advisory Committee to prioritize collaboration, partnership between municipal governments, with possible support from the provincial government to ensure implementation of a voluntary vulnerable persons registries province-wide that are integrated into the 911 system. And be it further resolved, a copy of the resolution be sent to the Nova Scotia Federation of Municipality and the Minister responsible for Emergency Management Office stated at the Nova Scotia the 17th day of uh, July 2023, moved by myself and seconded by Councillor at the water. Okay. 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 Great, thank you, Councillor Thompson, for reading that res resolution through, provided lots of information. We have a motion on the floor here for the resolution. I'll open it up for uh, questions and comments. Right. Well, all those in favor signify to say aye. Aye. Crunch your mind at name. Okay, moving on to number 12, mutual aid agreement between Anacostia County and Burlington Fire Department. Evan, do you want to speak on this? Uh, thank you very much. Um, so th this agreement stems from the uh, new construction of the Twin Highway uh, heading east, or I guess both east and west from Anacostia to Victor County. And basically, the whole reason behind it is just the the locations of the fire departments at this point, due to the highway being moved. Uh, there's actually departments that are closer to uh, different emergencies that are outside Victor County, and so this was brought to to us by the chiefs of both parties, River and uh, and the Anish Fire, uh, as a suggestion. And I think it's a great idea. I think it'll cut down quite a bit on response times and things like that. So that's where it stems from. Okay, perfect. Thank you for that uh, information. Open it up. Go ahead, Councillor Warren. I think so, but I can keep up with the only question I have is that I see the initial side, the animal reporting side uh, on, the, on the contract. I'm just wondering, should I work? And we'll go. Person that we've this one. 
I don't think the first tabs um, are remote working or signed as well. Um, I guess the difference would be there that they don't have direct remote services managed. So I think that person sort of is filling that role. Uh, but certainly that's something I'd be able to do. Yeah. In motion. We need a motion. Um, okay, moved by Council Watt, second by uh, Lord Parker, uh, that we accept the adoption of the agreement. Any final questions or comments? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Council Watt, it nay. To carry. We, next, we have the appointments. Um, some more sheet valuers for our. County. We have District 12 sheet value of Willard McDonald's and then we'll make the motion for that. I'll move. Okay. Second. Okay, so moved by Councillor Dewar and seconded by uh, Councillor Thompson. Okay. Any questions or comments on the Willard McDonald's list are sheet value District 12? Seeing now, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I have the mic to be trending air conditioning. Uh, very nice. This is short legs, more agreeable. <laughs> Thank you for your suggestion, Councilor Parker. Any other community event? Go ahead, Warden Parker. Thank you, Madam Chair. It was on July the 30th uh, at the uh, field and sale. They're coming in Sarah now. Uh, there will be a musical uh, concert. The open air concert. Uh, so we'll have uh, two young fiddlers, uh, mine and Pastor Dean's uh, niece, Amelia Parker, and Katie O'Coin from Sellerman uh, will be still in the fiddling. And uh, there'll be a band, I forget the name of it right now, a band from the Toro area. Uh, and uh, $10 admission it should be well worth it. Uh, and it'll be sort of a kickoff for the all the work being done at the field and say, all our work, one to four. Okay. Now, and bring your own chair. B Y O C. Yes. Perfect. Bring your own chair. Okay, perfect. Any other community announcements? Deputy Warren Murray. It's very nice to discuss the virus for job refugees. Obviously, so. You have to record our story, but once. Yes, it's really neat they're doing theirs all online this year. That's pretty cool. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Elliott. Uh, community event barbecue, the annual barbecue, Chilling River Community Hall, July 23rd at 11. Uh, largest 15, smallest 10, and it's taken out only. Okay. And any community announcements? Go ahead, Councillor Washington. Yeah, annuals. Sounds good. Like seven days around the other twenty dollars each. Tickets are twenty five dollars each. Okay. Sounds good. Go ahead. Did you pick something more? Just see you on the tonight. The uh, Warden C and Herman John on the twenty seventh, which is uh, not this Thursday, the next Thursday. And uh, there's going to be uh, an announcement there on the pickleball grant uh, and the money that uh, was kind of uh, gave up. So that will be taking place during the uh, during the work of Stadium. That's at the Fire Hall uh, in River John uh, from 2 to 4. I think the announcements are on 2 to 3. Okay. Thanks for the reminder, Mr. Stevens. Yes, I see River John days have a lot going on. They have a jam packed schedule there. Any other final community announcements? Uh, I'll, I'll plug mine again. The Caribbean District Fire Department is having their inner lobster dinner August 5th at 1 p.m. Takeout only. Meal includes lobster, homemade potato salad, coleslaw, roll, tomato, cucumber, and dessert. $20 each. 
And pre orders are being taken now 902 759 0686. Okay, that's all the community announcements. Uh, I'll adjourn it. Like to follow the proper service meeting to order. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are on the Mi'kmaq, the ancestry, ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq. This is approval of the agenda. Yeah, up there. Okay. All those the parents saying that? Uh, my name goes to David. Next, is there any emergency resolutions? Huh? One. Years of omissions of corrections to minutes of June 19. Here years of corrections to omissions to minutes of June 19. For time in the year of the mission of corrections to the minutes of June 19. The amount of the rules approved. Next is reports, field inspectors report. By Deputy Warden. Second. by Councillor Elliott. Questions? <laughs> None. All those papers saying what they're saying, aye. Right. Now, my name is Pierce. This is bylaw law and control officer's report. I'm over. Yeah. Councillor Wilmer, second by Councillor Keel. Questions? And all those in favor of saying aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Got my name, which is clear. Next is the Belmont Officer Report. The Councillor Elliott. And the second by Councillor Butler. Questions? Any? All those in favor of saying aye. Aye. Got my name, which is clear. Next is the Let's go to the Federation of Women's Families reporting on policing. Councilor Wild. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to bring to everyone's attention here in council that we had the phone call last week and it was early in the day at four o'clock, so it was early for some of the work. And so I just wanted to make sure that you're all going to copy what we saw at that uh, presentation. And we're there is a lot of concern right across this province with policing of uh, the regional and our state. And the NSFM are uh, bringing together a community to work on this, but they want to get the feeding from counselors and from the various concerns they have and what they like about it. And I sent you out the uh, copies of what we had gotten, so if you have a read through, that was exactly what they were saying on page one. Uh, page two is just one of Harrison Roosevelt's reach group. Um, they're going to plan another meeting closer to the fall, possibly with the uh, conference in November. Uh, but they want to get as much feedback from the councils as they can get. So, if anyone has any suggestions, any ideas, or things that they're concerned about, by all means, contact uh, Wesley at the NSFL office and uh, he'd be more than happy to report your concerns or whatever. Uh, that's about it, Robert. I think Robert, you were there when we called him, so you may want to ask us now. But basically, People who are not against the RCMP, they're not mad or angry or anything like that with the RCMP or the, or the police. It's just the bureaucracy of it and how little say the municipalities have with such a huge cost site. This council pays over $4 million for things they can very good say they want to happen. It's more concerned with the bureaucracy that comes down from the top as opposed to the guys that are on the phone. It's just ways that we can do become better informed and have something go on the first floor to get to get in. You enjoyed that. Uh, yeah, no, I uh, was on that phone call uh, last week. Uh, I think you know, things are moving too slowly to get to my opinion. Uh, this is a more urgent matter than what the, the attention is being given it. Uh, it's, it is common during across this province. Some areas more so than others for sure. But I think the concentration sometimes is not 
we need a, a better system of how uh, people are not, as Council Wells said, against the RCMP. It has been made clear in the NDV remit. With mentions made, perhaps we're looking at the uh, provincial policing or regional policing or whatever. Majority are still in favor of keeping the RCMP in this uh, process province. And, and the same applies here in, in our area. We just want it done differently so that there's uh, more follow up, there's more visibility, there's less time wasted doing paperwork or I mean, you sit with somebody for six hours, all of those things that are thrown out to us as reasons why. And there's a common concern that oftentimes, even though figure over four million that uh, was mentioned that we're paying, oftentimes we're not getting near the number of officers that we're paying for. And by the time we break them into shifts, days, and everything, we don't have very many to cover this big area of the rural part of our county. So there's a lot of things that need to be. I don't know if the word fix is right, but need to be retaped anyway, uh, just to provide better service. And the pe people aren't feeling that they're getting the service that they got at one time. And there seems to be a lot of effort and concentration since for the peak uh, on the uh, police advisory board here, or they're called other things in other places, but there was a bit of discussion at the uh, vote meeting last week that retaped that somehow. That was going to make a difference. I, I don't really believe that. I think that in order to make a difference, you've got to change the, the way the business is run. It's run too much from the top right now. Uh, the model might mean by the top. And the, so they have to do things certain ways and they, they can't uh, deviate from those. And so the advisory boys are good. They, you know, the uh, superintendent, whatever, uh, you know, he gives us information, uh, good information, whatnot. But, we really, other than making a suggestion, we can't change that much. Some of the towns with their uh, police commissions have uh, a little bit more control over that. But, um, it's, it's a big problem and it's going to take a, a lot of hits together. And I give NSFM some credit for trying. I just think they're going too slow. Uh, we need to get on top of this. So, you know, the Court of Aid was a big example. Everybody points to it. There's all kinds of problems going on every day, too. That this time the whole system has gone over and modernized. I think we would have better meet the, the, meet the needs of the people today. So I, we are on the way, but it's, uh, I think we need to do it as a municipality. We need to push this issue a little harder so we get more attention to it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Well, I'm glad we're talking about this right now because this morning I placed one of my addresses. It's a very important volunteer for the Oscar Fire Community. We did some damage down at one of the parks. The people from the park and other people fell off stuff and found out where some of the stuff went, I guess. And they can't even get the police to go out to look at. And they said, well, you can't do this, you can't do that. And it's just what you just said about the bureaucrats. There's too much in between, and it doesn't matter if it's the police or if it's the school. We got no say in the beginning, or all we're doing is collecting the money. Maybe they should collect their own money, but uh, I know that there's, I'm at the end, and there's quite a few people in the big county that are off sick and on stress, and we're just in this investigation one way or another. And I know it's hard to get the butter spread over everything, but. The problem is getting bigger. We've been talking about this problem since. Thank you. Okay. Yes. That's what. I should. I should have had a couple of things. Like one thing is the NSM and are trying to go at the community to be able to deal with this, but they have 49 units now that's cross province, and they, they need to get the input from all the members because they can't be the force. They they need our input for that. That it may seem slow, but I think it's because they want to do it right. And they need all the right partners of the day. It can't just be counselors of the day. It has to be police, police, police departments and what have you too. But it's, it is a huge issue, and it's, it's not going to be fixed only. So I just want to put that out there because I think it is something that will take time. And maybe because you want it done right, when we deal with it for the next number of years. So I think it's important we do do the right. But we have to support the NSFM moving forward on this. They're acting on our behalf, but, but they need our input to do that. And secondly, uh, LCA had brought up their police advisory, just 
people just suggesting different things to try to guide you know, a better working relationship with uh, the RCAP, with the regions, whatever they have. But with um, Allenstown, they thought there was a big gap between what's happening at the advisory table and what counselors being told. Them. So they felt like the counselors were having a close connection with these officers. So they went in. It's a pilot project for them for two years, but they had all counselors on the police advisory, and they actually are going to keep that now. They counsel on the police advisory, it's along with three um, public people at large, and they said it works a lot better than the house for better people who are still on the police, and they are going to keep that, they're allowed to keep that in those. So just a lot of knowledge that they are going to keep that in the game because it's working for them, which they're going to be. It's just a bunch of ideas like that. People push them. Okay. Yes. Well, Dungeon Station Road intersection. A few words. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks, Wayne, for sharing this information that I got from one of the residents. And everything is certainly very clear in that letter, and that's the very dangerous intersection uh, at different times. Over the past years, I've asked for people to look at it and prepare to look at it, but they have, but nothing seems to work. Um, and when you talk to the neighbors that are there, you know, well, there's only a crash not because they're in there, the neighbors squeal the tires, and they're just waiting for something to do. So, uh, I would ask Council that would support the Joe Greenstein's uh, request for the uh, audit. I'll second that. Safety on it. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I know we've never discussed that before. Randy can uh, update us on what that would be without the task council. But uh, we uh, send a letter to the minister, copy to our MLA and to Greg Chisholm. We're going to ahead of it as I'll ask to Greg Chisholm. So no key. Yeah, key. Okay. Copy that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you're doing that because I'd, I'd really like to be able to double that and say about the road, or the arch broke in the start of traffic or road that stops on and hopeful we'll about the trees and the bushes. And it's been in my uh, great pair of work that I've been for two years. And we had the highways and the police. And we still can't get anything done. And I, I did. But people were very much upset about it the night of my rape here for me. And I'm getting calls all the time about we had an accident. And I thought, well, the accident's going to help. The police were there in the fire department. Nothing seems to help. But if you fellas can get something figured out, I'd like to get Piggy Taylor on the back. Okay. Thank you. Just my dad, that's the uh, intersection between the middle station and the over John. Okay. So, safety of the auto, we don't have one. The district traffic supervisor happened to do a little bit of a breakdown, so it's out of the area. Yeah, but that's a little bit. So. Yeah. Anybody else? <laughs> Yes, Mr. Chair, I'd like to speak in, in favor of the motion. I think a similar study was done at, at the intersection of uh, Highway 245 and Trump Door and Sutherland River. It took a few years to get results, but uh, the uh, the results were positive in the end, and we now have a have, uh, it has been addressed to some extent. So uh, I think this is a good route to go. So Dave. The mode of that intersection is certainly is one that needs a pencil. But fundamentally, there has to be some people. These are right out of the edge, named at all kinds of places. Highest is death. They are very, very well in the seat of the intersection. So, year after year after year, I see something that can never go. It means a lot. Yes. None. All those very same by saying aye. Aye. Now my name. What's your period? That's the British River Schoolhouse Museum. Mostly looking at the British River Heritage Party. Right. This allows me to do some things here. Um, 
No, it's a little more complicated than that. Um, the this actually dates back to '94. Um, there was a notice of recommendation filed by council, um, and it was recorded in the registry of deeds. Uh, starts the 30 day clock where anybody can in theory object to it. Um, and then once the 30 days is up in council, then everything was back to then serves notice on the owners uh, off to the property that the consideration was uh, being given for the registration as a heritage property. And there is a requirement under the act that you actually conduct the hearing. Uh, so that group would have the opportunity to speak at the hearing in favor of the recommendation. So, um, so I guess the first question is, do we want to kind of close the loop because it appears to have been missed? Um, and it was right around, uh, the notice was in September, uh, 30 days from the at the end of September, uh, it's the election, so it might have just Get this to the bad. So, if there's a loss for cancel the loss, we can move on this summer. Keep them notice immediately for the hearing. Also, I think that's 29 in here. So, go to the party to turn it up. Excitement. Questions? Seeing that, all those in favor say no. Aye. 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 The least concerned or moved back, I think, for a long time. And 81 years old, and the government was from the uh, house that he received, and it was only while first of all, and I tried to prevent them from investing his fields any more than they already have. So since then, I've sort of did some investigating, and so I understand some uh, for me. Uh, it seems very confusing sometimes whose responsibility is. Uh, it's certainly the uh, Seems to come down to the, the, the province uh, as a responsibility. There's a daddy that replied in a letter here uh, saying that the Elmshore Department of Agriculture administers the Agriculture Weed Control Act and the regulations, which address the control of noxious weeds that present significant economic, social, or ecological risk to the agriculture industry. Wild person is not currently listed as noxious weeds. In the province of Scotia, because it's not this is not just we, they don't do anything but uh, we have some more weed problems in this county than uh, wild birds have occurred. But this one came to attention because of this particular gentleman working so hard that's at 81 years old going to pull these things. It's not that they're kind of well rooted, so they're not easy to pull out of the ground. Uh, but it, to me, it points out to us that there's something missing here. At one time, we had a weed inspector. And the weed inspector, I knew some of them over the years, it's a lot of years ago now. But, you know, if you had some weeds in your pasture that were the ones that could cause problems for your neighbors and stuff, he came and visited with him and recommended what you should do, you know, to get them out of there because uh, you don't want them spreading to the other fields. They are a threat to the agricultural industry. And we read up on this wild earth or something, you don't want to get that on your skin. Uh, if that stem breaks and some of that, uh, do skin some and you'll uh, you, get a, a bad burn from that. So uh, it's not only for agriculture, but it's just for personal safety and uh, ecological reasons. These uh, weeds that tend to take over like that are often the problem with other countries that get introduced here and uh, they can outcompete our, our own native weeds many times. So you see an awful lot of them along the road. Watch along the road, you look at that picture and you watch along the side of the roads. Uh, Brother Dave just mentioned the, uh, the weed in terms of actions at the corners. Uh, I, I started watching this well, and you'll see that a lot of places they seem to like the ditches. 
uh, you know, you see them all along the district attorney, even if they're not talking about one day, you see them all along the shore, uh, all the different roads. So the question is there, because the problem seems to do very little, we've got a, a major problem, and this guy is uh, called Guy about Wheat, uh, just terrific problem with that in our intervals and stuff. And these crop, these weeds too are quite, uh, they say that they're not up to their level or whatever, not fit weed, but they uh, they do hurt the production of animals, uh, both in weeding and in, in milking ability of the uh, uh, it happens to be in your hay fields and, and the same as your feed, uh, they're, they're not good, uh, not a, a good plant to have there. So the question is, what do we do with? So we can write to the province, uh, which will probably not do as much good, I don't think, they sort of decided to put the weed control on the on the back burner on those, but uh, did get some information. I don't know, did that quote everybody surrendered? Except for the stuff I need. Yeah, that uh, HRM has put uh, last July, I think uh, they put a back through or whatever to do with integrated pest management. It doesn't justify the weeds because there's other major problems in this province that are killing a lot of the trees. All of our ash trees are going to disappear soon. Never last four are being brought in from outside. But every ash tree will die. Uh, there is only one every elm tree die. I have just six left. I do see an odd one in the field sometimes. But uh, and there's there's other uh, trees that are, are threatened, and uh, so it's not only weeds, but it's the insects. So they put through a policy. I guess I'd like to make a motion that our council or our staff uh, study that policy uh, that the HRA put through in terms of called integrated pest management. So they look at different levels of control and the chemical is the last thing. After you've looked at everything else, whether it's physical control like Mr. Ronson do, both we took, uh, or uh, if it's introducing, I remember years ago, they introduced the set of moths, the control of stick and willing. Uh, there's still a lot of stick and willing around, but it's not near as bad as it was years ago. Uh, so, they, they look at the ecological, the, uh, the different levels, and it's well explained, and, and perhaps uh, uh, Adam or Soran to send that uh, information out to all counselors uh, on the integrated pest management. So the motion would be to have uh, staff study that, uh, that uh, resolution from uh, HRM and uh, perhaps look at bringing something forward for our council so that we can have a way to address these problems here at this point. Second. Second. Council D. Uh, this weed has been around for quite a long time. Close to all about the problem of cow carcinoma, growth six or seven would be high. They are probably already seeded out for this year. Not forget the flower. Uh, they start very, very early in the spring. They live there on a high end only. For one year, this is the next spring. Um, they can even cause blindness if you put out within these clients. It's much more than that. They are dangerous. I have been in love for decades. I go in all that area. I care. I'm in public. I wear goggles. They are two of them, wild parts of the way. One of them, I like, go to the Scotland distance, the size of the river, cover it. And they grow on in the ground, down in the ditch, and they're very happy. Very prolific. They are a real problem. Can cause uh, the skin birds, juice bits on their arms, their hands, or the sun, their skin will react worse than the sun. That's the cover damage for us. Should be trying to do something about them. They are widespread. Anything yeah. else? Seeing me. All those who are going to say that I'm saying on it. Come on, Dave. Here. This is the land you can pay me nothing. No. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, the update. Uh, 
it's pretty brief. Uh, we received a progress report from our plan by 7th, earlier this month. Uh, speaking of the rest of work completed thus far, uh, we expect to have, they are continuing to work. They expect to have additional information back to us in August, uh, including a, a follow up on the engagement strategy. Uh, they ask that uh, councillors please uh, respond if you haven't already. Uh, with your information, uh, if you need assistance in taking those forms, let me know and I can help with that. They're basically just looking to find out who in the area, who in your district you think will be a key stakeholder that you want to be engaged. But I know there's some concern among some councillors about, well, we don't want to put these people's names out there because we don't want them to be contacted and identified and things like that. And that's not the intention of this process. So, these people wouldn't be contacted with prior knowledge from, from this group. So hopefully that gets people mind the compliance needs a little bit, but the real intention is to get into the they're finishing the background report. They expect to submit it at the first week of August, along with the updated engagement strategy, which as you mentioned in our meeting with them, they expect to start in the early fall. Yeah, I'm taking questions. Two questions for Logan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Logan, I know when I did mine, it seemed to go take forever to get the report in. Just can we check someone else, see if it got run? Yeah, we just confirmed. I don't have the names here, but that's something I can ask. Yeah, our it's all good. Right. Yeah. yeah, sure. Bye. Further? Update on projects in Holmes Brook Over Water Project. So yeah, thank you again, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, the update there is that uh, it's been uh, received tenders uh, back from three consultants. Uh, however, some additional work needs to be completed uh, with regards to uh, first editions consultation, but that's expected to take another other two, uh, after which time we would look to provide a recommendation to the to this committee that offered the council for the Thank you. I'll ask the question. Um, after 60 days, if there's no feedback from First Nations, does it proceed there? Uh, should Brian be here? Um, yeah, I do. We have to submit a report to Infrastructure Canada, basically uh, detailing who we sent the letters to any responses. And they signed off on it, uh, saying it's complete. So, so we mentioned we talk, we're kind of holding off on the award uh, because it's been that funding is approved. And nothing is eligible for cost sharing until that process is indigenous consultation is complete. I think so that's why I've stayed here. So the date is September 22nd is the date that we've given the 13 when we had to consult the 13 First Nations um, in the province. 13. So, um, the 22nd of September is the day. Okay. Seeing no other questions, uh, just agree with Councillor Dave Parker. Maybe we should uh, be the air conditioning now. We'll get out here in a decent time. So, anyway, I'll call the meeting adjourned. Yeah. 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 Yeah.